Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mrs. Alifante's virtual classroom, where science learning is fun. Today, I'm going to explain how to do the motion lab. So, as you click your lesson, this one, you will be directed to the ingenuity portal. This virtual lab will determine the speed and acceleration of the moving object just like this race car and this will explain how the slope of the racetrack affects the speed of the object moving along the racetrack just like this one. So let's move on to page Here are two. the materials that you'll use in this virtual lab. Here are the materials that you need. Same as before, you don't need to buy the supplies. So you need to download the student guide. And once you download it, you will have this document. But just a reminder, because this, docu this document will only show you the data table. So I would like you to download the guide questions as well, which is found here the high school lab report and this will show you the questions that you need to answer before during and after the lab these are the questions however I have these questions as well under the table so let's begin so I'm just gonna move on to table A then you click done if you have it and proceed to page 3 so it says you will set up your race track with four checkpoints and you are going to drag the segments of the track to connect them together. And then you are to drag the measuring tape just to measure the length of the race track. And then you are going to record it to table A. So this will be the length of your race track which is 609.6 centimeters. And then you are going to convert this centimeters to meters just by simply dividing it by 100 because centi means 100. So that would be 609.6 divided by 100. That is 6.09. Another way to do it without using your calculator is just simply move this to two decimal place going to the left because there are two zeros in 100. So you're just going to move this one, two, and then you're going to put the decimal place there. So that's already in meters. Next is you are going to click continue. And then you are going to put the cubic block. Just simply drag it or just click it. And we are going to measure the height of our lower racetrack. This is increased by 10%. So just simply drag the measuring tape. And that is 61 centimeters. So you are going to put here 61 centimeters. So here, since we are going to convert it into meters, what do we do? Either use your calculator divided by 100 or just simply count two decimal places going to the left because like I said, there are two zeros in 100. So it's going to be 1, 2, so that would be 0.61 meters. Okay, and then click continue. You are going to add another block which will be um, an increase of 15% of your racetrack. So drag the measuring tape and that is 91.5 centimeters. And likewise, you are going to convert this 91.5 centimeters to meters. So what do you think is the answer to this? Do it please. And then click continue. Next is you are going to divide the length of your racetrack by four so you will have a data here. So what you will do is just click on continue and then get your measuring tape and measure the entire length again get your marker and divide it into four so you're going to have one two three and four next is you are going to convert the racetrack the checkpoint distances and the height of the lower and the higher racetracks from centimeters to meters which we already did actually right here so I just want you to complete this row, which is already the conversion from centimeters to meters. Record the appropriate racetrack heights and checkpoint distances in meters in the left column of tables B and D. So let's see. So this is where you put the height at start, and then that's table B, and then for table D as well for the higher race points. So we have here. Um, 0.61 is our lower racetrack, so we are going to put that there, 
So hopefully you are already converting this one. So whatever your answer here, when you converted 91.5 centimeters to meters, is what you put here at the height of the higher raised track. So uh, hold you responsible uh, for that one length of quarters checkpoint. So what you're going to do is just simply divided the, divide this by 4. So that will be 609.6 um, divided by 4 which will have 152.4. So we are going to convert this into meters again. Next you are going to drag all the stopwatch in this circles. Next is drag your race car and click. There you have your time 1, time 2, time 3, and time 4. So you are going to do this for trial 1. Checkpoint 1 for checkpoint in meters which will be here. The first one is 0 um, 1.524 this will be your trial one. So the time was 2.15 seconds. And then next one is 3.25. And then 4.23. And the other one is 5.01. But you are going to supply the missing information here. So this is already half of the checkpoint. So simply multiply this by 2 and put it here. Do it again for trials 2, 3, and get the average. So to get the average, just add all this together, divided by 3, because you have 3 trials, and that will be your average time. This is the same thing for the rest of the rows. So guys, these numbers are just example. Do not copy this because your averages will depend on the time that you have here. So let's say I already have a data for the average time. Like I said, how do you get the average time? Simply add your numbers here and divide it by 3. That will be your average. So here, what you're going to do, it says the average time for the first quarter checkpoint. This is your first quarter. Let's say I have there 2.07. And I see here 2.07. And then the second one is 3.16. Like I said, this is just an example. Do not copy this. So that's 4.11. And then the finish line is, let's say, 4.92. So I'm just going to change that one. For example, so 4.92, and then you click Done. So, okay, now once you have your averages, we are going to proceed to table C. Now for table C, um, it has initial time and then final time. So what we're going to do is for the first one-fourth of the track, you are going to put zero because it started from here. Which What about for the second half, one-fourth of the track? So here it stops in this place, right? The 2.15. And remember, you took the average here. So you are going to use the average time, which is 2.07. So that's 2.07. And then next would be uh, whatever you have here, 3.16, for example. So you're going to put it there. And then the final is 4.11. I hope that makes sense, okay? Because So I'm not going to put all the data here because I want you to do it on your own. This is just an example that I'm going to show you. And then the final time here is 2.07 because that is your um, initial, which is um, the starting point. And then here is your first quarter. Um, you have the time, the final time in which you used the average. Average. So in other words, actually, whatever your answer here should be the same as here. And then um, your final time here is 3.16 because that is your average time at this point. So you are going to simply copy that here and whatever you have here, simply copy that here. And then the elapsed time is you're just going to subtract this final minus initial. So 2.07 minus 0 is just equal to 2.07. And then for here is 3.16 minus 2.07 would be equal to 1.09. What do you think will be the trend if you already have these numbers right here? Well, the average speed is meters per second. So what you're going to do is, since this is the lower track, use this time 
and then the length of one fourth track. So one fourth track, remember, it is one point fifty four. So what you're going to do here is that divided by this time is equal to zero point seven. 3, 6, so I'm just going to put 0 0.74. So if you use two decimal places, you are going to use two decimal places all throughout, so you have consistency. So you're just going to change this to two decimal places. So I'm just going to do that one right here. And the rest should follow Okay. here. So quickly, we're just going to do this one, so you have um, an idea. So that will be this divided by 1.09, 2.80. Okay, so like I said, predict what will be the trend of the average speed here in response to our average elapsed time. So next, what you're going to do is to complete table in the D fifth and we're step, almost done. You will okay, so technically you will do the same here as what you did for table B, but this time your height is different. So since we already have the higher height, so you are going to use this in meters. So whatever equivalent, whatever is the conversion of 91.5 centimeters to meters, that is what you are going to put here. So the same Thing. You are going to do exactly the same here, but of course your numbers will change because we already changed the height. And then for the average, you are just going same thing, same as what we did here, but again, your numbers should be different because we used different heights. All right, and then that should be it. So just simply follow along. Um, the instructor here will give you what exactly you are going to do. And this tutorial is just showing you how to do each table. And then, of course, do not forget to answer these questions based on your observations. Be specific with your answers, guys. Each question is worth three points. So there you have it. I hope this helps. And if you still have questions, please email me and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you will be notified of our upcoming tutorials. See you next time. Happy learning. Bye.